Welcome back. Cook and Let Sockeye runs are surprisingly low this year. Earlier in the show, we told you about how dip netting on the Kenai is closing early to compensate. And on the commercial side, sockeye harvests are the worst they've been since 1980. Joining me now to talk about this are Department of Fish and Games Re representatives Bert Lewis and Tom Vania. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Hey, thanks, Liz. Now, Tom, you're from the sport fishing side, so let's yeah. start with you. Last week, we talked about the low king salmon returns. What's going on with sockeye salmon? Well, kind of like kings, uh, sockeye are coming in less than we expected. And we're kind of early indications are those fish that spent three years in the ocean that usually make up the bulk of the run. Those are the ones that are really coming in poor this year. So that was kind of unexpected. Yeah, and we actually have a, a graphic from the Department of Fish and Game that we want to show everyone here. So looking at this, uh, we see that there's those two solid lines. And from my understanding, that's where you hope that fish, the fish numbers will be. But that red dotted line is actually where they are. That looks way lower than what you'd hoped. Yes, much lower than what we would hope or had expected. So we are taking actions trying to put more fish into the river so hopefully we can get up to our, our escapement goals. And at the same time, of course, uh, rolling back on how much people can fish. Bert, uh, on the commercial side, you know, we've talked about what's going on with sport fishing, but what about commercial fishing? How are you asking commercial fishermen to help compensate? Well, we're in a similar, similar position as uh, the entire of Cook Inlet with Kenai and with the low returns, we've been restricting the fishery, which is why we see the harvest, uh, as you mentioned, at the lowest levels we've seen in 38 years. And uh, we've been pulling fishing periods and limiting the area open to the commercial fishermen to target uh, stocks like the Kasilov, where we actually have decent returns right now. Well, I posted on social media about this interview with both of you, and I want to read you a question from one of our viewers who asks uh, whether the bycatch of king salmon by commercial fisheries is affecting the population of kings for sport fishing. Tom, your thoughts? Well, any time you have less fish coming into the river, there's going to be less for sport fishing. But again, uh, we're on track to achieve the escapement goal for king salmon on the Kenai. Uh, and that was a part of restricting all the fisheries to make sure that we have enough for spawning. Well, you've got kind of an interesting dynamic down on the Kenai. You've got sport fishermen mixed with commercial fishermen. They're, they're actually in the same line of sight. So when you're deciding how to def divide up the, the piece of the pie, so to speak, there's only so many fish for everyone, how do you decide how to distribute those restrictions among sport fishermen and commercial fishermen? Bert? Well, you're right that that uh, situation really has set it up for what Cook Inlet has been famous for is the fish wars. And it's divided up by regulations that the Board of Fish has adopted that allocate to each of the different gear groups. And it has management plans that we implement each of the different divisions to allow opportunity to equitably harvest the resource as it comes back. So what makes it more complicated than, say, just rolling back how much each user group can catch? <clears throat> Well, we can't just uh, restrict and expect to have a 10% uh, reduction in harvest in the commercial fishery and then equitably do that with the uh, personal use fishery, for example, because the way the fish come in, uh, you can't really anticipate when they're going to be harvested. And it's so it, we always compare it to acting like you have a scamp scalpel when you have a hammer. How do you decide how much to restrict? Well, the management plan guides us. Uh, there's an in-river goal, which means how many fish get to the sonar, and that's to put fish into the river to allow for in-river fisheries to be uh, prosecuted as well. That in-river goal right now, the low end is 900,000. And then once it gets into the river, the in-river fisheries are trying to meet an escapement goal, which is left to spawn, and that's 700,000. So you're trying to manage for each of those goals. The commercial fisheries has to put fish in there, a little bit higher bar, and then the in-river fisheries has the 700,000 escapement goal. So we managed to achieve each of those goals with each of our fisheries. It sounds like you've got a lot of technology on your side to help try to accurately predict fish count, but there is still room for error. The Department of Fish and Game came out in June and said it had actually been overestimating the number of king salmon on the Kuskokwim River for decades. Um, and, and that's a problem because it can lead to overfishing. So what kind of lessons are you applying here in South Central? 
Well, for the, the, the King project, our King assessment project, our sonar project there, we made a lot of advances in technology that's there. So now we are managing towards achieving an escapement goal based upon large fish. Because we can separate large fish, large kings from sockeye salmon or pink salmon or silver salmon to give us a more accurate indication of what's going into the river. So, so we're always looking to improve and refine our estimates to kind of reduce that error in, in those. And if there is a margin of error, it sounds like you'd rather err on the side of undercounting rather than overcounting fish? You know, our mandates are to err on the side of the fish, um, not, not on the people. So uh, that's what we strive to do is if there's always uncertainty in all the actions that we take. And so you always have that eye to uh, what's best for the fish. All right. Tom Vania and Bert Lewis with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Thanks so much for joining us today.